What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Eric Freitag. I'm the founder and CEO of Puka Trade. Uh, Puka Trade is an online peer-to-peer -peer trading platform for collectible trading cards. And you said the the transaction was 100 Puka points for a dollar. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And that will always stay the same, and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But that's correct. Always, okay. That's correct. Hey guys, today we get to talk about Puka Trade, and I'm the only one you're talking about it because it's like beating a dead horse. But I wanted to mention it because I found a video of the guy saying that Puka points will always be a hundred points to a dollar, which is not true. It's just false. And I want to go over how they scammed a lot of Magic players of their hard-earned cards, and they had a lot of help. So it wasn't a bunch of people who just took money. They made a system which made it very acceptable to give points for if you posted on Reddit something positive about Puka, points. If you upvoted, points. If you wrote content, points. If you were a YouTube celebrity, points. If you were no celebrity, points. If you were someone's grandmother, points. But the most points, $5 million points, went to the owner and his team. So let's hear him again say... And you said the, the transaction was 100 Puka points for a dollar, is that right? Correct. Correct. And that will always stay the same and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But That's correct. Always, okay. That's correct. <laughs> We're going to keep repeating that over and over and over again because the basis of Puker Trade is that statement. And that's why a bunch of investors who know nothing about magic, nothing about trading cards, why someone would ask that question. Immediately, they understood what it was. They asked the question. Without batting an eye, Eric said, yep, yep, always, yep, yep. So they went from a office downtown to a apartment, which is never a good sign for a business. If you were going to invest in a business, you don't want their headquarters to now be a apartment complex or apartment. So things are not looking good for them would be an understatement. I have always been anti poker from the very beginning in I think 2014, 2015, when they first started, they offered me points to promote them. I asked them, how do these points work? And they just say, do you want more? And I was like, mm, I don't think that you guys get what I'm trying to say. They made money by devaluing their currency. And you said the, the transaction was 100 Puka points for a dollar, is that right? Correct. Correct. And that will always stay the same, and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But that's, that's correct. Always, okay. That's correct. So, how much is a Pico point today? Is it still one penny? Does a hundred Pico points get you, I don't know, a dollar of magic cards? No. A Pico point is if you wanted to promote it and do all this stuff. It's closer to 300 Pico points for a dollar, which is insane. Think about the inflation on that. Over two years, two to three years, it went from 100 for a dollar to 300 for a dollar. And then this guy, which I can probably believe, he bought them 30 cents per hundred with an extra 500 thrown in by the seller because it is garbage fire right now. Garbage fire. So a lot of people are cashing out. And yet the basis of a Puka point is, let's, let's hear it again from the guy. And you said the, the transaction was 100 Puka points for a dollar, is that right? Correct. correct. And that will always stay the same and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But That's correct. Always, okay. That's correct. And now I'll kind of explain how it works. Uh, it works quite easily. You get a bunch of... It works the same way the monthly magic box work, where you send everyone who's a YouTuber, celebrity, has a Twitter handle, you send them a free box to review, or even in some cases you pay them, 
they say something nice to about the box. They tell all their subscribers, like Rocks and Box and Ninety did, that a two dollar and nineteen cent binder is worth nineteen ninety nine, and you're gonna triple, quadruple your value. Then the person which I have evidence of, because I have screenshots of his PayPal, does not send. Collects eight thousand dollars a month and does not send a single box to these people. Some of them subscribe for six months that will get automatically charged every single six months or every month for the next six months. And some have paid in advance. Guess what? If you don't have a YouTube channel, you don't get anything. We're not even gonna send you the blanking box because who cares about you, the paying customer? And that's when like, you hear other channels talk about protection, and I'm here to protect you. But anyone who said this was a great, good idea knew it was you not. You said the, the transaction was 100 Fuga points for a dollar, is that right? Correct. correct. And that will always stay the same and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But That's correct. Always, okay. That's correct. And here's the difference, right? So let's say you're a big YouTuber, you, saw, you got 5,000 people to sign up, at a minimal, you got 300 people, 300 points a person. So now you have 15,000. As a minimal, you have 15,000 points, which according to Puker is worth $15,000. Why would you ever send a magic card other than to promote it, right? Other to, than to get more people to use your link to get you more points. You have 15,000 blanking points. What on Puker trade can you not buy? And a very big YouTuber, I remember watching a video of him defending Puker Trade after everyone left it. After everyone else said, this sucks, he was still saying it was amazing because he was probably getting everyone else's points. So instead of giving points to um, Tolarian to or Weds or any of those people, they just gave it to this one person because he was the only person left. And he was saying that he had the best experience. He was receiving so many cards. He didn't send anything out and it was great. Think about that for a moment. He didn't send anything out, but he was re receiving a lot of cards. What the blank is happening that would allow that to be true? Well, let's listen again. You said the, the transaction was 100 Fuga points for a dollar, is that right? Correct. correct. And that will always stay the same and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So what if I told you from the very get-go, Pico Trey was backed. It was backed by people, as you can see from this old Macintosh. And you can also see from the Boros Legion, Legionnaire, right? That card was RTR. That instead of trying to fund it themselves or put any of their own money in, they just took other people's money and eventually they took $5 million of other people's money and that's where they are. So the value they had was if they deflated their currency, let's assume the currency is a dollar, 100 points for a dollar. If they made their currency 200 points for a dollar, they would get to keep the other dollar, right? They would get to keep 50% because now it costs you, the person who got these points, You, if you paid 100 you paid a dollar for 100 points, your 100 points are no longer worth a dollar under this scenario, it's actually worth 50 cents. But what if it was worse? What if you could get 100 points for 30 cents? Well, your 100 points that you paid a dollar for is now 30 cents and you lost 70 cents, multiply that by every single user on Pico Trade by the amount of dollars they have. So if you only have $5, you've only lost 70 cents times $5, you lost $3.50. You have now a dollar fifty. And you said the the transaction was one hundred Fuga points for a dollar. Is that right? Correct. correct. And that will always stay the same, and the market for the cards could fluctuate. But that's the correct. Always, okay. That's correct. So in that case, let's take the other extreme case. Let's say you had ten thousand dollars in Pico Trade, and you paid you you or you paid ten thousand dollars for what is that? a million Pico points. Well, your million Pico points is no longer worth $10,000. It's worth less than $3,000 according to what people are now buying and trading it as. So they just stole $7,000 from you. 
by devaluing their currency. And I guarantee you that most people who were promoting this and saying it was amazing, this is everyone should join it, it's perfect. They're smart people. They are smart people. It's just like the monthly magic box. I told Rocks and Box in 90, hey dude, what you're saying is $20 is not $20. Here's a link to Dave and Adams for the same item for $219. They literally buy everything from Dave and Adams. Those amazing playmats you're saying is 20 bucks. Dave and Adams gives it to you for free if you spend over 200 bucks worth this free shipping. But they didn't listen. No one listened. I gave them the link after link after link. I'm not going to call it everybody. But Roxy Boxing 90, he was the one that like really got on my nerve because he kept doing it. Like people stopped doing it after like I showed them screenshots of the PayPal's and all that stuff. But he just kept doing it because he was getting free boxes. I don't know if he was paid or he was not paid. This is a company that took $60,000 of money to build possibly the worst website for themselves in over 10 months. Think about this for a moment. I cannot imagine a bigger scam ever happening in Magic Gathering because the scam would have to be over $5 million, right? At a minimal $5 million. They're, they pay their content creators in Pico Points. They paid their sponsorships in Pico Points. No one got paid real money except the dude who took $5 million out. And I hope he's taxed on it because that's a lot of money, dude. And that was the original plan. It was the plan from the very get-go. And everyone knew it, but everyone benefited from it because you were passing the buck to the next person. But eventually, the music stops playing and there's no chair. So once Puka actually dies, I will rip them to shreds even more. But it is, uh, it's kind of like an antelope and now it's lost its hind legs and it's bleeding all over the place. Not like totally dead yet, but the crocodiles are getting around, the lions and the hyenas are interested, the vultures are, you know, circling on top. It's not completely dead yet, but they have moved to a apartment from an office building. Never a great sign for a $5 million startup. Actually, I would assume the $10 million startup because they took $5 million in profit, right? So I assume that, you know, let's say it's $10 million for, it's an it's a eight figure company that now is being run from an apartment. I have my doubts that they will last much longer. Anyway, should, should we watch another... So we watch them say, no, we're not, we don't need to watch them say again. You can rewind and watch them say it like eight times in this video. A puka, 100 puka points is always worth a dollar. So if someone can blantingly lie like that to an investor or to a stranger on camera, how the blank do you think they're going to make a website for $60,000 in a reasonable amount of time? They just pocketed the money and then just hired some random volunteer, paid them the volunteer and puka points, and they got this. I make websites. A $60,000 website is a legit beautiful website. If you go to mtgline.com, that cost me 100 bucks to make. I mean, it's not done yet, but it's a beautiful website nonetheless. 100 bucks, dudes. 100 bucks. I mean, if you can consider my time, be charged my time at $200 an hour. Mm, maybe at most I spend 10 hours on it, so 2,000 bucks. But to get to a $60,000 website, I know it has like, you know, uh, features, quote, features, but they never, they never intended to spend that money on a website. It's just, it's either... It's either too much to pay someone to do it for you in a month. You can send it to India and $60,000, hell, they make it for you in no time. But then if you were to um, hire a developer, $60,000 cannot hire you any developer, especially one in California where they're located. Maybe they hire a remote developer, but even at 60 k like we can't, at my company, we can't hire anyone at 60 k as a developer. Our starting wage for a developer starts at 65. And we're in Houston, so we're not like in Oakland or San Francisco. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.